epicenter location. How can we find the location where the epicenter happened? Remember, epicenter is the location of the earthquake. Well, the, the actual location of the earthquake is called the focus of the earthquake. That's the point where there was the rupture, the movement along the rock. The epicenter is that point on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. It's possible that the focus and the epicenter could both be exceedingly close, but sometimes that focus could be miles and miles down below the ground. We're going to try and see if we can figure out where the epicenter is, where on the Earth, Earth's surface uh, is the point of the earthquake. And to do that, if we remember, we could have um, seismogram readings where uh, nothing happens, nothing happens, and then all of a sudden we get some waves. And that first wave to get there is the P wave, and the second wave after that is the is the s wave and let's say that this station is in that this station is in rochester remember this is not where the earthquake happened but this is where the seismogram is that recorded the waves so the rochester didn't feel any shaking at all but these body waves the p wave the primary wave the first wave to get there is there and the s wave or the secondary wave would come after that because they're a little bit slower. And let's say we had some times on here, we were able to figure out that the P wave got there at exactly one o'clock. So one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds. And then the S wave showed up and it showed up four minutes after the P wave. So the S wave got there at 104 and zero seconds. So we see that there was a four minute difference. Remember the, one of the key points here is what's the difference between the P and the S wave? There's a four minute difference between the P wave and the S wave. And we, as we have been able to do in the past, is figure out how far away is the earthquake from Rochester using page 11 of our reference tables. So here's page 11 of our reference tables. And what we've done before to find a four minute difference between the P wave and the S wave is we've used the scrap paper method where we just take a piece of scrap paper. And what we want to do is we want to find out where is there four minutes. So we're going to mark on our scrap paper the P wave at zero time. And then four minutes later is the S wave. And my next step is just slide this until I find the P wave and the S wave at a difference of four minutes. There it is. Look at that right there. So right here, I see the P wave and the S wave at a difference of four minutes. So here I see the P mark lined up with the P wave line, and I see the S marked up with the S wave line, which means the earthquake is this far away from Rochester. Uh, this 2 is 2,000. This 3 is 3,000 kilometers. So in between there, there would be 2,200, 2,400. This mark right here, 2,600 kilometers away from Rochester. So here, here I am here at this map, and here we are in Rochester, and we know that the earthquake was 2,600 kilometers away from Rochester. And there's a scale down here at the bottom. So we, got, uh, we could use the scale to figure out where or how far away the earthquake was from Rochester. The problem is, is we don't know in what direction that earthquake occurred. We know it was 2,600 kilometers away, but was it 2,600 kilometers away to the north or to the south? We're not sure in what direction. So what we can do is we can draw a circle around Rochester with a radius of 2,600 kilometers. And we know that it will at least be somewhere on that circle. So here I have a circle that is 2,600 kilometers away from Rochester. So I know the earthquake's got to be somewhere on that circle, uh, but I don't know where. I just know how far away it is. I just don't know in what direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call up some of our friends elsewhere and see if they could also draw a circle as well. So we call up our friends over in, uh, let's choose San Diego. So we call up our friends in San Diego and say, well, what was your seismograph station like? And they say, oh, well, you know, we had a seismograph that the time difference was maybe three minutes and 20 seconds, and we calculated that to be 2,100 kilometers away. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle around San Diego. That's 2,100 kilometers away from San Diego. And so here's a circle around San Diego. That is uh, 2,100 kilometers away from San Diego. So now we know the earthquake has to be somewhere on the green line, and it also has to be somewhere on the blue line. So the earthquake's going to be either right there or the earthquake's going to be right there. So we're not talking it's got to be inside the circle. It's got to be on directly on the circle. So 
So we need one more station, one more location that has a seismograph station so we could figure out where this earthquake's going to be. Let's give our friends uh, up in Juneau a call. Here they are in Juneau. Well, let's go a little further north up here in Juneau, Alaska. And we'll say, all right, hey, guys, you got it. did you get the P wave and the S wave from the earthquake? Yeah, we did. And uh, what, what was your time difference? They give us the time difference. They calculate the distance. And our friends in Juneau say that maybe it was, uh, you know, 1,500. When we measure that, what will happen is those circles will all meet in one area. And that's the point where the earthquake happened. The earthquake had to be 2,600 kilometers away from Rochester, and it was. The earthquake had to be 2,100 kilometers away from San Diego, and we see that it was. The earthquake had to be 1,300 kilometers away from Juneau, and we see that it was. There's only one spot where all of those uh, lines meet. That's the location of the earthquake, or what we like to call the epicenter. So you need three seismograph stations to find the location of an epicenter. If we had four, five, or six, we had some more, we'd be a little bit more accurate with exactly where that epicenter falls. But the minimum number is to have three seismograph stations. In this case, we had one seismograph station in Rochester, New York. We had another seismograph station in San Diego. We had another seismograph station in Juneau, Alaska. And they were able to tell us that the earthquake must be certain distances away uh, and there's only one spot, one location, where that's all three distances away. And we can figure that out by drawing some circles around our stations.